So it was in January 2007. I had joined Médecins Sans Frontières, or Doctors Without Borders, well, a couple of weeks before. Um, we were running a 100-bed hospital in Adre, a small town at the border between Chad and Sudanese Darfur. I was 30. It was my first mission on the field of operation. My job was to make sure that everything was in place for the doctors and the nurses to treat properly their patients. So I was doing a lot of things, but the medical part of the job, of course. I would have loved to, but couldn't. One morning, war broke out. Adre was attacked by opposite forces. And I was not there. I was actually at about one hour drive from the city that morning, taking care of the landing of the plane that was bringing supplies and stuff, new stuff as well for us. So I received an HF call. We are in a safe room in the compound of the hospital. Bullets are flying. We'll keep you updated. The plane was there. And we had to decide collectively who would live with the plane and who would stay in case we could do something once the fighting would stop. And we decided that I would stay. So about one hour later, I entered Adre, a silent, very quiet city where few people were starting to pop out of their houses. But as we were approaching the hospital, we realized that it was very, very serious. And so we started working during 48 hours with barely any sleep. I can't really remember a lot of things during these 48 hours, except a few moments like some truly undeserved death and the first time I had to carry a dead body. I can remember one more moment, though. Um, at what one moment, I decided to, to have a break, to step back. And during the night, in the middle of the hospital, I started looking around me, and I felt, I felt well. Not that I was happy. That would have been inappropriate, I guess. Not that I was proud. Not that I was relieved. I just felt I, I was at the right place, the right time, doing the right thing to do. I think, in a way, I felt blessed of living this very horrible event. And some people might call this wallness. I don't know. But it didn't last long, actually. It lasted a couple of seconds. And then I, I went back to work. And, and that's it. But it's still here in my mind today as I'm speaking to you. The question here and now is what allowed me to live this very special event? What in my history made me converge to this place, this moment? And more importantly, because we're speaking of change, what made me an actor of something that I had dreamt of so much before, in this case, alleviating the suffering of some people? Well, I believe that most complex things can be modelized with a triangle. So I will speak about a, a change triangle. I think in order to become an actor of change, it starts with some kind of frustration. Something between, I'm feeling a, a lack of something, a little bit of something, up to a deep indignation, right? In order to feel this frustration, you need to know deeply who you are, if you have a personal mission, personal values, on one end. And on the other end, you need to sense well your environment, the need of the environment, what's happening out there. And when you see something out there which is not aligned what's with something in here, I think the first driver of change is activated, and I would call it the frustration driver. You feel frustrated by something, and you have the willingness to align what you sense with who you are. But that's not enough. In order to turn this frustration into an action, you have to align this with another thing, which is what you do. Your capabilities. For instance, I guess many of us in this room here um, dreamt of becoming a vet when they were young, right? Because we all like pets. Okay, all right. So if you become a vet and you like pets, you're basically, you are internal consistent, right? And this is a second driver of change. But at the same time, 
I don't think that the need of the environment is that all of us become vets, right? Because the needs for vets are fulfilled with a certain amount of vets. So it's about our suitability. The suitability driver is a third driver of change, to my point of view. Having this triangle equilateral, in a way, by working on the three apexes of the triangle, is what I think can really turn you into an actor of change again. So how to work on the three apexes of the triangle? These are things that are pretty well known these days. Who you are, it's about deep diving into ourselves, welcoming feedbacks, having maybe a personal mission in life, etc., etc. Not a big surprise, the very famous change actors, they know deeply who they are and who they are not. They know their limits and they try to push them. What to do? What to do, it's about increasing your capabilities, about lifelong learning, it's about experimenting as well, trying new things. And what you sense is a lot about openness, being curious, obviously, having few, if no, orthodoxies, or at, least, or, sorry, at least being aware of your own orthodoxies, so that you can challenge them sometimes. This triangle is kind of self-reinforcing to my point of view. And there is no one single entry point. Like, for instance, if you experiment new things, you might discover you things about yourselves as well that you didn't know before. You might discover things about the environment. So it's self-reinforcing, and it may become a trap or a comfort zone. And I think for some reason in your life, it's totally OK, it's totally fair to leave this triangle and to open a new one or to run a new one in parallel. I think it's fair, and I think it's probably even needed in a lifelong journey. So the question here now, the next question is, how to make sure that we're not falling into this trap, right? And not be stuck in one triangle. And here I would like to give you two personal tips two personal ingredients of change, I would call them. So now back to my personal humanitarian story. Um, at that specific moment in Adre that night, I could really feel that my triangle was equilateral in a way, right? Because I was sensing, I was witnessing something out there which was echoing deeply with my personal value at the time, and I was there doing something. Right. I spent 10 years with MSF, and I truly enjoyed it, every moment. Um, I probably could have stayed happily ever after with MSF, maybe not happily, but at least wholly ever after with MSF. But at the same time, I was really scared about this comfort zone that could make me blind and lazy in a way. And at the same time, my life was started to be occupied by two new entrants, two kids, and that changed a little bit your personal mission as well in your life, right? And so, I decided to quit. And then I realized, at that time, I was two years ago, that I had always quit my job without knowing what I would do next. And that it was very important to me because it puts me regularly in a kind of a danger zone where my brain is actually super active, you know, in a survival mode, where basically the world is at the same time dangerous, but full of opportunities as well. And so it helps me think, design new triangles around. This survival ingredient, I would call it the survival ingredient. <laughs> and so I became a consultant in agility, which is something I had never thought before. And I, I really need to quit MSF in order to think that I could become these kind of things. So that was two years ago. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing in two years' time from now. I really don't know, and actually I don't want to know, because I want to leave my options open. And this is my second tip, my second ingredient. It's about the freedom ingredient. Right? It could be phrased this way. Try not to put yourself in a situation that will anchor what you will be doing in X years, team, uh, X years time from now. In my case, it would be two years about. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing in two years. 
it's not that easy. And it doesn't mean that you shouldn't have kids and, and buy a house and get married and etc. obviously, but at least to be very, very conscious, very aware about your freedom of obstacles that you're putting in your life, right? So you get, on one hand, survival and freedom ingredients, which allow you to think, find, and grab, design, new triangle, hence new adventure, I could say. And once you get the triangle, you have to nurture it by making it equilateral, if you can, by working on the three apexes of the triangle, and then you can really become, I think, an actor of change. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in two years. All right. Maybe I'll be back to the humanitarian world. Or maybe I will be teaching scuba diving in Tahiti. Or maybe I will be on a rock band tour. Or maybe I will still be a consultant in agility. I don't know. And I'm very, very fine with this uncertainty. Because what I know is that if I don't mess up, I will be able to feel again the same kind of feeling that happened one night in Adre, the feeling of being where I'm supposed to be and doing what I'm supposed to do. Thank you.